So in this problem, we're told an airplane is heading due south at a speed of 580 kilometers per hour. If a wind begins blowing from the southwest at a speed of 90 kilometers per hour average, calculate A, the velocity, magnitude, and direction of the plane relative to the ground, and B, how far from its intended position it will be after 11 minutes if the pilot takes no corrective action. Hint, first draw a diagram. So here's our diagram here. We have this plane heading south. Right, so we have northeast, southwest, and it's had, uh, heading south at 580 kilometers per hour. But we also have a wind that's uh, blowing from the southwest uh, at 90 kilometers per hour. So let me write that in. And we know it's basically going to be 45 degrees from here because it's in the middle of each. So just keep that in mind. Sorry about that error at the top. I don't know how to get rid of it. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and solve this now. So starting with A, what we're going to be finding is the velocity. Keep in mind they say magnitude and direction. So in order to find uh, the plane's magnitude, the first thing you have to do is basically split every force acting on it, or you can imagine as a force basically, uh, or its speed, right? So basically all the things acting on it, uh, you got to add up their components. So since we have it like this, we're going to be uh, working in the X and Y direction. So basically what you do is split the components into X and Y and then add them together. And then when you have them all together, you can just uh, basically uh, use a formula and get their magnitude. And then that will be basically the magnitude of the speed of the plane. So hopefully that makes sense, but you'll see it here in a second. So uh, we're going to look at the two components. So one component is the speed of, or just the plane by itself, right? So ignoring the wind here, uh, we can see we're traveling 580 kilometers per hour. And you see how I drew the x and y direction. So it's basically traveling 580 kilometers in the y direction here. Uh, and another thing to keep in mind when I do this, uh, I'm going to indicate negative for downwards and then positive for upwards and then positive to the right and then negative to the left. So you can kind of see how I labeled it there. Uh, but if we want to imagine what is the velocity of our plane here, so we can call it VP. And so Basically, you split it into its components. We'll call it VPY and VPX. So velocity of the plane in the Y and the X. So we know in the Y direction, it's traveling 580 kilometers an hour. But keep in mind, it's south, so it's negative. So we would write VPY as minus 580. And then we use these symbols, I hat and J hat, which basically are unit vectors representing the X and Y direction. So uh, in this case, the vector in the x, you would write it as minus 580 j hat. Or sorry, this is the y. So the y is for j hat, x is for i hat. So minus 580 j hat, that's the y component of the velocity of the plane. And then if we look in the x, notice it's only heading due south. So it's not traveling at all in the x. Therefore, vpx is really just 0 i hat, which is really just 0. So you can basically ignore it since it's not traveling at all. Uh, in the X. Uh, keep in mind this is kilometers per hour though. Uh, and then yeah, so now we have the velocity of the plane in the Y and X. And now keep in mind the wind is going to be acting on it. So there's going to be components from this wind that's going to force it to travel. Uh, we know it's going to travel something like this around this way, uh, just based on uh, the force or the being it pushed by the wind. Um, but now we got to look at velocity. I'll call it VWY and VWX. So the velocity from the wind in the y and x. Uh, notice though, this one's at an angle, meaning it's going to have a y component this way and an x component this way. So y and x here. Uh, this one only had it in the y because it was only on the y, but this one's angled, so it's in both directions. So now we need to find those. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So first we need to find out the y component and x component of this. And then we'll just uh, know it from that. Um, so what I'm going to do to show you how to find that is to draw a triangle. So we have a triangle like this. Let me draw it here. So it'll look something like this. All I did was essentially draw this triangle up here, but down here. So notice this is your magnitude, I guess you could call it. And it's basically just 90. We know the value of this wind in this direction like this. Uh, we know the angle of this triangle is 45 degrees. 
right, right there, that angle here. And then we know uh, along here is the x and along here is the y. And so what we want to find is what is x, what is y? Because if we can have their components, we need them here, right, in this spot. So uh, we need to find them. The way we find them is by using a little trick. So you should know that uh, the cosine of an angle, in this case it's 45 degrees, cosine uh, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So Sokotoa, hopefully you remember, it's adjacent, which is the x, over the hypotenuse, which is the 90. So multiplying it, or just having x over 90, so cosine of an angle, adjacent over hypotenuse, uh, and uh, yeah, so if we just want the x, you can multiply both sides by 90. And basically you get uh, x component is 90 cosine of 45. So we have our x now, uh, and now we want the y. So for y, you would just use the other, or you would use the sine function. So in this case, or just in all cases, uh, sine is written as uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite of our angle is y, uh, the hypotenuse is 90. Therefore, it is y over 90. Uh, once again, you would just multiply both sides to get your uh, y component. And you'll have 90 sine of 45. And uh, yeah, so I'm actually going to figure out what these values are. So I'm just plugging these into my calculator. Essentially, you'll get 63.6, we'll say 6, yeah, to 6.4. Uh, obviously, this is in kilometers per hour. And the thing you should notice is since it's at 45 degrees, the sine and cosine of 45 are the same. So these are actually just the same values. And so now that we know both of these, uh, keep in mind the direction they're going to be acting. So in the Y, since this triangle is pointing this way like that, the Y is going to act upwards since it's pointing upwards like this. And then the, tr the thing also points to the right. So our X component is to the right. So if we want to write them in their component forms, uh, starting with the y, uh, it would just be the, the y value, right? So whatever it is, 63.64, um, writing that in. Uh, and then keep in mind, it is upwards, therefore it's positive. So as I said before, upwards is positive, so up like this. And then the x is the same value, 63.64, uh, but notice it's pointing this way in the positive x. So as I said before, x is i had so let me write it a bit neater 63.64 i had okay cool so now this is all of the things acting on our plane essentially so what we do now is we sum up the components in their respect uh, respective direction so in the x right so you could write it like this 63.64 i had uh, this would be the x we can call it vx and then vy would be the y's added up so 63.64 uh, plus negative 580. And so make sure when you do this, the units line up. In this case, they do. In other problems, they might not. But you'll get minus 516.36 uh, J hat, yeah. And so notice, if you, if you write this out, our plane's going to travel 63.64 kilometers per hour in the I hat, and then negative 516, right? So whatever that's going to be, it'll travel something like that. Uh, but they don't want the components, they want the magnitude. Uh, to find the magnitude, you use this formula here. So we can call the magnitude just v. It's the square root of vx squared plus vy squared. Now, how do we get this formula? Uh, you can kind of see it like the Pythagorean theorem. So if this is v, this is, we'll call this vx, because it's in the x, and this is vy, uh, we know that, we'll call this a, b, and c. The Pythagorean theorem tells us a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse. Uh, and then just to solve for c, you just square root. So uh, essentially, that's where we get the formula to get the magnitude. Um, but yeah, so it's really just a matter of plugging it in now. So let me go ahead and do that. We have 63.64 uh, plus, and then the negative sign is just going to cancel. So I, actually, I'll just write it in. But just keep in mind, you're squaring a negative value. So it actually just goes away. So we have 63.64 squared plus 516.36 squared, and then second square root that value. You will get V is equal to, yeah, so it equals 520 
0.266. Uh, I'll just round it, so 520.3. Uh, and then the units are going to be kilometers per hour. So this is the magnitude of the velocity of the plane. Uh, just keep in mind we had to take into account that wind uh, into it. So uh, it's going to travel 520.3 kilometers per hour this way, right? But they also want us to find and the direction. So keep in mind they say magnitude, which we just found, uh, and direction. So when they mean direction, they're essentially talking about the angle relative to the x-axis. So basically this... Uh, that's the way you explain the direction. So we need to find that now. The way you do that is you take the arc tangent of your y component divided by your x component. So we know the x and y component of our magnitude are these two values right here. So minus 516.36 uh, and then the x is 63.64. So taking the arc tangent of that, minus 516.36 divided by 63.64, you will get the arc tangent is equal to, oh, sorry, not about that. You will get it equals minus 82.97. So minus 82.97 degrees um, is going to be your theta. So keep in mind this is degrees. Uh, you can round whoever you want, but essentially what this angle is is that angle right there. So 82 degrees would be it. So it's definitely more like this, which should make sense because we're traveling much more in the y than the x. So obviously uh, the angle is going to be bigger there. Um, but yeah, so there's your magnitude and direction. So these are your a. And now for b, uh, it's actually a lot easier. So for B, they're just saying how far from its intended position will it be after, uh, or how long will far from its intended position will it be after 11 minutes if the pilot takes no corrective action? So we can say the time here is 11 minutes. And then let's think about this. So its intended position is obviously uh, just along this Y here. So its intended position is just to go straight this way. But we know it's going to veer some distance in the X. And that's what they want us to find. So we're basically going to find how far uh, in the x-axis it travels or how far away it is from it where it should be. Um, and the way we do that is by looking at the x component. So you should know distance equals velocity times time. So if we know its velocity in the x direction, okay, we know its velocity in the x, and we multiply for how long it travels, 11 minutes, that'll give us its distance from this point essentially okay so hopefully that makes sense but uh yeah so we know our velocity in the x we just found it in earlier was 63.64 i had so along the x multiplying by time uh notice the time is in minutes though so our, our units are kilometers per hour so if we want the distance kilometers our time has to be in hours so uh, 11 minutes into hours you should know that 60 minutes is one hour. So you just basically divide it by 60. Uh, your minutes cancel there. So 11 divided by 60, you get 0 0.1833, we'll say. So 0 0.1833 times 63.64, uh, you'll get 11.667. Um, and so obviously this is in kilometers since the hours would cancel. Uh, but yeah, so you can just say about 12 or 11.7 kilometers, however you want to round or however your teacher wants you to. But since this wind is blowing, we're going to be 11.7 kilometers to the east, um, right, relative to this y-axis here. So your answer to B is this value right here, 11.7 kilometers. Uh, and then, yeah, so your magnitude is here and your uh, direction is right there. So, uh, yeah, so those are going to be your answers. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.